Right, you're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's get into our next discussion now. Alimi Ibrahim Adediji uh, graduated with cumulative grade point of average at the CGPA of 4.98 out of the possible 5.00 uh, from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, widely uh, considered as one of the toughest departments in the University of uh, Lagos. Now, taking to its Facebook page to celebrate the brilliant student who uh, back the BSc in Mechanical Engineering, uh, the school posted a photo of him and wished uh, the young man greater heights in life. But many Nigerians took to the comment section to congratulate him as well. Uh, stakeholders now want government to consider establishing a reward system for exceptional students so as to encourage others as well as to uh, counter the fixation on what they term immoral reality TV shows uh, that we're, we're getting that from some of the comments that some persons made on the comment section all right joining me now is the man of the moment himself uh, Adediji Alimi on uh, 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 Skype on zoom rather Adediji good morning it's good to have you join me good morning sorry I couldn't get there I'm stuck in traffic no it's uh, all right I understand but let me say congratulations for uh, coming out tops in your department and in your school. Okay. Now, share with us uh, how did you how did you achieve uh, this feat? At, at what point did you start working towards this? Uh, how how did it come to you? Uh, well, I my own days. I I just wanted to finish with a first class degree. Um, a very good CGP. I never envisioned finishing with. Uh, I was as a first graduate student or with a four point nine. I don't really feel very well. But at the point where I got to like formal level, it became like a possibility because um, at that point I think I was like the highest in your school. People were telling me, okay, you can actually be the best graduate student. So I would say my formal level, five point nine level, that was when I knew, okay, this is a possibility and I can actually make it happen. So, so, so uh, as it is, uh, talk to us basically when it comes to reading, researching, what was your life on campus like? Um, well, I think my um, early years, that's my only level, two hundred three hundred level, I, I studied more. Like, I was also engrossed in the book. I felt like, oh, school was like my priority, right? I needed to make a very good grade. So, on my fourth year and fifth year, I started engaging in other extracurricular activities. But in terms of my reading pattern or reading life, it wasn't like, um, I was always reading 24-7 or 11 hours in the day. The way it is, I, I think, read. So for me, reading was more of a necessity and mood. So what I mean by necessity and mood is, uh, so some days I can come back from class and I feel like reading. So I take, I carry my book, I, I read it for like an hour or two. There are some days I don't feel like. And in terms of necessity, when I know I have exams or I have tests, I definitely have to read, irrespective of my mood. So even if I don't feel like reading, I just have to read because I have a test of exam to read for. Amazing. W w were you involved in uh, extracurricular activity in school, like unionism and uh, you know school politics and other things, shows in school and and stuff like that? No, I didn't participate in politics. Uh, my father didn't like politics, so <laughs> I, I, I didn't participate in politics. So he told me back then that don't go to school and engage in politics. So politics was everything out of it. But in terms of other things, yeah, I did extra curricular activities, joined some societies. I was a member of um, EATC, that's professional IOT there with the design competition. Mm. And I also played football. See, I represented my class in uh, 500 level. I was going to see Bermuda. So, yeah, I did some extra curricular activities. What, what reactions are, uh, have you been getting so far from people who see a brilliant and excellent result as yours, especially talking from the perspective of uh, organizations or people who have the wherewithal uh, to give a lot of things to you on a platter of gold? I think uh, the, feeling, the feeling is great um, and can be overwhelming at times. You just get random messages, random calls, people calling to congratulate you. The feeling is actually very great. I think uh, my parents are proud of me, my my friends, my classmates, I want to shout out to them. Like, they really played a crucial role in uh, me making um, this BTS and a post class degree. So, basically, I think it's, it's a great feeling. Everybody wants to be associated with success. 
So what is next for you now? What, what are your hopes and expectations? Um, for me, I intend to like further my education um, outside the country. So I have, I have plans. I'm already working. I'm already working towards. I'm already working towards it already. Um, so I want to further my education. I'm looking at uh, renewable energy. What I do that in the future. So that's an area I want to explore. All right, uh, DDG Alim, Alimi. Thank you so much uh, for. Uh, joining me on the program, and we wish you well. We'd like to keep a tab on what you're doing as a way of uh, promoting the good things and being an example and role model to other students who like to come up with brilliant results like you did. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay. All right. That was Adediji uh, Alimi. He came out, he graduated uh, with a 4.98. CGPA results from the Department of Mechanical Engineering in University of Lagos. Brilliant result, I must say. Excellent result, anyone would say. All right, let's move on now to uh, something else. Now, music is a food for the soul, and what a better way to get into the, into the weekend mood with listening to good music, I must say. Now, uh, our feature today was born in Suruleri here in Lagos. Uh, but now practicing his trade in Germany. Uh, Omiuno Michael, also known as Mikolo, is taking Nigeria's sounds to the world. Now, from day one, music has been his passion since he was a little boy. From the records that we got, uh, he was a professional footballer before he finally chose music uh, as, his, uh, as his profession. Uh, he joins me now to, uh, you know, give us a glimpse of some of the things that uh, he loves to do. So let me welcome Omino Michael. Welcome to the studio. Great. And welcome home to Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> Good you to so see you. Later. Now, uh, uh, in fact, there are two issues we're going to talk about now. The issue yeah. of you being in football sometime and then now music. Okay. Talk to us. How did you transit? Why did you transit? And how has it been so far? Cares. Uh, first of all, uh, Music has been in me right from uh, childhood, mm. and uh, the football thing was, yeah, was still the love of Africa. Every African young one. Yeah, I would like to play football. Well, I just like to watch football. <laughs> yeah, so I kept playing the football. So I had a every time I found myself getting pains on my bodies, on my knees. I have to go to the doctor. I have to sit down. So it come to a point I start thinking, okay, this this is a little bit stressful for me. It's disturbing me and stuff like that and I said okay even in the field while playing football I keep singing okay I keep singing whatever I make goals I go keep singing dancing okay. after the training just keep singing dancing the love for the music keep coming so deep and so deep so deep so deep and one day I was like okay football you sport my knee you wow. sport here it's enough <laughs> let's go straight to the music and I just and since then is the music all the way all the way so uh, what 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 kind of music do you do you play? How, how would you how would you classify the kind of music that you, you, know, you play? For me, if I, I I will say my kind of music is Afro life. Afro life. Yeah, I would call it Afro life. Okay. Why? Because the type of things I sing it uh, more like reality things. Mm -hmm. What is happening out there, and what would definitely make you. In one or two ways, when you listen into my words, you see, oh, this is fact. Hmm. This is fact. This is real. Yeah. This is happening. Yeah. Oh, something people happens. are able to connect with the with the issues you talk about in uh, yes. you, the picture that you paint in your music. Yeah, yeah. There, people are really like. I'm seeing the love from people out there. Just keep pushing. Now, t talk to us from the window. You, you are in Germany, and yeah. when it comes to Afro life, yeah. In Germany, yeah. How are people, you know, accepting uh, it? Yeah. How how are they connecting with it? The white or the Africans there? Germany as a whole. So so okay. you you, you <laughs> have to break it down to us if Africans are connecting with it more yeah. or there are Germans that are connecting with more, uh, yeah. whoever, whichever. We like in Europe, mm. in Italy, we have uh, a group of like association. Okay. For example, we have like ADJs, we have DJ Buriti, and we have other. Afro Passion DJs, Brandy, and so on and so forth. And these DJs go in the club and play African music in the club. And so the white people get to know their African sound. Mm. 
and the DJs introduce our songs in the club. And also in the TV screen, they introduce the songs like ADJs there from, they're a group of DJs. They come from all part of Europe countries. So they have the group chats, they talk to themselves from all sides and they put together something out. This one play from this country, that one play from this country. So every DJ got his own fan. So when his own fan, try to say, oh, I love the wow. sound of that music. Wow. And so this is how they keep spreading <laughs> like that. And they're really doing great job. Also, Booty T Afro Hour, every Wednesday radio, and also DJ called DJ Randy, really doing a great job. And we're the artists, we're giving all our best. The only thing I could say, we're, we're trying to make people home to like know what we're doing out there. Because yeah. there's these people out there, they don't, they don't listen to African, they like more techno yeah. and this sound of music. But we put in these things that okay. everybody puts in this effort. Drawing their attention to the reality of other yeah. sides of music that they, they are not very They're not conversate, uh, correct. And right, now, talk to us about uh, you coming home and because you are in Germany, yeah. when, when you come home, what pulse do you feel? feel when you talk about your music? How, how aware are people back home about with your music? Oh, it's quite difficult for me. In everything we do, we start from, some from I believe somebody starts from somewhere. Yeah, exactly. First, the home here is really big. Mm. It's really big. Yeah. When you have to be like well known, you have to be massive, you have to get these connections and that go up and down and keep fighting for all these things. And the way it is home, it's ah, in everything, nothing good comes easy. Yeah, nothing good comes easy, but. All right, so in all of that, you, because you use the word connection. Yeah. How are you connecting with artists back home? Because this is home originally. Yeah, the artists back home for for me right now, I never, uh, I never got a personal contact with no one. But I believe one day my sound is gonna make me contact with one of them. Okay, but but you're not making any conscious effort to do that because if you have your PR PR team and all yeah. of that, of course they could, you know, put in something exactly. Like, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, because I, co collaboration is everything. Yeah, yeah, of course. I have a big dream to mm. collaborate with so many. All the good ones, and oh. I, I hope and pray one day, like I get the chance to make a collaboration with anyone, mm. as long as I know he is good or she is good, yeah. And we'll bring better things all right. together. Now uh, we we have just about a minute to go, but I, I would love you to give us one of your sound, uh, any of your song that um, uh, you feel you can maybe one of the lines that we can connect with, basically. Okay. I know I don't have the <laughs> turntable here to do all of that, but then. <laughs> well, all right, there was. Uh, okay, to, for example, in my new song now, I just dropped, there was a place I say one word. Uh, anything you do for you, now me go stop it. Like anything you do for you, I'm going to stop it. Wow. wow. I, I can play one. One of your songs is playing. On the on on the background right now, and this is one of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's the vibe. Yeah. All right. So, so what, what is he about that song? What, what's what's the message there? What does it say? The, it's a love song. Yeah, it's a it's a song about everybody deserve every man or every woman deserve an happiness. If okay. you watch the video, it's a stop violent. Like some guys get. The ladies hurt. Don't be so aggressive yeah. on your woman. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Like Oma Tena is she's a beautiful is the name of a beautiful girl. So right now, if you look the video, it's on YouTube, it's on everywhere. Like I'm going there to take her out from the stress. The cause the boyfriend get jealous. Oh. And it's something natural happened out so, there. So it's a love story 
Uh, and then we can also use it to uh, preach against uh, violence against yeah. women and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, like everybody deserves happiness. It's amazing. Because what, what part of Nigeria are you from? I'm from Edo State, but oh. was born and birthed up here in Lagos. In Lagos, so, through Larry, yeah. to be precise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mikula, we have to leave you here now. Uh, I'll certainly. Uh, get to listen to more of your songs, watch more of your videos, and then connect with all of them. Of and course. then do more and go the dance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. You're thank you for coming. You will. And uh, I hope you're home for some time before you go back to Germany. Sure. So sure. I guess we get to hook up somehow, make a lot of music noise and so on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Now, this is where we draw the curtains uh, with uh, Mikolo on the show talking about the music uh, that he has been making across uh, Germany and, uh, part, uh, and also parts of Europe. Uh, he is home for a little while. Now, this is where we also come to the end of today's edition of the program, also for the week. Thank you for spending your morning with us. Uh, it's going to be a great weekend. Stay safe wherever you are, and don't forget that COVID-19 is still in town, so adhere to all the health protocols by government and health officials. Have a great day ahead, and have a great week. Bye now. <laughs>